pure silk is essential to making an authentic Banarasi sari. They can only be made here in the town of Varanasi, where the craft was born. Weavers use methods that go back 600 years and even add gold and silver threads to their designs. At one point, they were so expensive, only royals and the wealthiest of families could afford them. But cheap imitations made with synthetic silk have flooded the market in recent decades, forcing many weaving families out of business. So how is this centuries-old tradition still standing? To weave a Banarasi sari, a weaver first sources fine silk. It goes through a cleaning and dyeing process before it's made into thread. Dyers drape the white silk over steel rods and submerge it in tanks of boiling soap water and then rub the yarn with their hands until it's soft and bright. They give it one more wash and hang it to dry. The colors are mixed with warm water, caustic soda and acid. They dip the roll in the mixture for two to three hours to make sure the threads are coated evenly. Dyers change colors according to the season, festival and city. Muhammad Afzal Ansari has been working with this silk since he was 15 years old. He has preserved the traditional ways of weaving Banarasi saris, like using the kaddi, a 200-year-old wooden loom. He follows designs that are punched on cardboard cards he buys from Arun Kumar. It's sort of like making a stencil. Arun uses this tool and a hammer to pierce holes in them. This is This starting Nowadays, he's so fast, he can make thousands of cards in one week. The drawings blend Mughal, Persian and Chinese motifs. This work is called Likhai. Artists use traditional designs or invent their own. Muhammad ties all the cards together, then hangs them on the moon. But the difficult part is working with the threads. Most Banarasi saris are six yards long, and it takes 5,000 threads to weave a single one. And Muhammad works for two days to assemble them on the loom. He sprays water to preserve their elasticity and to make them softer. Now he can start weaving. <laughs> These golden silk threads are called zari, and that's what gives the Banarasi saris their signature look. Muhammad uses the threads in smaller spindles to create the iconic Banarasi brocades. He throws the shuttle from one end of the loom to the other to create the design. It's a tedious process that requires many years of experience to master. And Muhammad has been doing it for 40 years. Silk flourished in Varanasi between the 16th and 18th centuries, when the Mughal dynasty ruled over India. They were known for their lavish taste in architecture, food, and clothing. So weavers added real gold and silver threads into their silk garments. And only India's richest and most influential families could afford them. In the 19th century, more than 300,000 weavers worked across the city. But industrialization brought in power looms that produced faster and cheaper fabrics. Today, 
less than 15% remain in this traditional crack compared to its peak. These traditional fabrics are so festive that they're reserved for special occasions. In some communities, only brides wear them. The lightest sari will take about a week to weave. Heavier ones can take a month, and more intricate designs can take six months to complete. While Muhammad is able to only make four to five saris a month, a machine can finish a design in one day. Banarsi sari you see, it will be different. The power loom will be different. Saris can be expensive. Detailed and complicated designs can be sold for thousands of dollars. But fake Banarsi saris have flooded the market since the mid 1980s. They can sell for as low as 2,500 Indian rupees or 31 dollars. That's a quarter of what Muhammad charges for some of his cheaper saris. To compete, some business owners here in Varanasi are opting to use the machines too. And they've even started using synthetic yarns instead of real silk. A major hurdle is that it can be hard to tell the difference between the two. But Muhammad cannot afford the costs that come with the modernization of his craft. In 2009, the Indian government issued a geographical indication for Banarasi brocades and saris. That means only hand-loomed saris made in Varanasi and a few other districts can be branded authentic. But this did not stop the production of imitations and has not helped the traditional weavers. The future of the hand-loom fabric remains uncertain. But Muhammad believes that people who know the value of authentic Banarasi saris will continue to buy them.